Hi everybody and happy Sunday. Looking at the very real possibility we're dealing with a hurricane this week which will be named Ernesto and the very real possibility that it will become a major hurricane. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice keeping you up to date on all things tropical. You got this high probability now from the National Hurricane Center that we're looking at what will be a strong system very near uh, the Leeward Islands, then near Puerto Rico, uh, and then getting toward the west as we get toward the middle of this week. I'm keeping an eye on all advisories, all new model data that comes in, and I'm pouring right over it. What I can tell you here is that things have gotten a little bit more interesting with regard to this system. And I've been saying so many times over the past couple of days that weaker goes west. And the more this system stays weaker in the near term, uh, the more west it's going to go. Well, it does look like it's beginning to at least get a lot more thunderstorm activity around it. That's the deal with today and yesterday is that it's bubbling up quite a bit of storm activity and not real organized. So that may keep it a little weaker, but the weaker this thing remains, the longer it's going to stay off toward the west. So what do the models say? So if it remains weak, let me kind of scoot this down just a little bit. Uh, if it remains weak, it'll continue just to chug off to the west, impacting the Leeward Islands as early as Tuesday with tropical storm force winds, maybe even virgin on a Cat 1 hurricane as it spills into the Caribbean. Very warm waters, very uh, you know, high storm fuel for this activity. The models are in great agreement there. Where they begin to default is once it gets past, say, Puerto Rico, a stronger system is going to begin to tilt to the north. Okay, Weaker goes west, stronger will go more north. And in this case, some that blow it up early want to curve it earlier toward Bermuda, while some of the weaker ones start to turn it a little bit later. Now, most all the computer models do show this becoming a big, strong system. Um, so that looks to be inevitable. Let's just hope that it's made that turn and it's already on a trajectory kind of away from the United States when that happens. Here's the deal, folks. That turn doesn't look to happen until Friday, Saturday. So we've got about six days before that turn even happens. And then we've got days on top of that to track it if it does come to the United States. So even if this becomes a threat to the United States, I don't see it being one until we get to, say, um, uh, Monday the 19th would probably be about the earliest, okay? So let's look out this in the future. Most of the models do show a recurve. The GFS in green, the black would be the ensembles, um, the blue is the UK MEP, but we need to watch this closely. Uh, you see that recurve from our tropical models right there, but here's the deal. Almost all of our models show this strengthening in quickly. Within 24 hours, probably Tropical Storm Ernesto. Within 48 hours, some or a lot of the models have it going to Cat 1. But by the end of this week, we've got almost all the computer models very close to a Cat 2, Cat 3 in strength, which is why we got to pay close attention to it. So what do the models show for impacts for the islands? Well, here we go. It's going to rain. That's a certainty going into Sunday night tonight into Monday. So as we get closer to areas like uh, Antigua, uh, uh, St. Martin, areas north, uh, this could be a, a, a breezy situation. Uh, some rain moving your way by Monday night, Tuesday. Then it's getting a little more organized in or around Puerto Rico. Uh, this wants to keep it just north of Puerto Rico, which would escape the worst of the impacts. And then this model curves it to the north. That's the latest European. Let's back it up one run. And it's a little further south. Uh, and see, backing it up, time frame's about the same. But then it starts to curve as it blows up, it turns more north. If it remains weaker, it's going to get closer to the Bahamas and then blow up. So that's the key that we have to watch here is how far west does it get before it blows up. This shows a major hurricane impacting Bermuda by Friday uh, with this big dip in the jet stream here over the east coast, kicking it away from the United States and not making it a threat here. That's what the European is showing. Let's hope that remains true because as we can see from these models, whatever this becomes is going to become a monster. Now the GFS has been the one that has at times shown kind of some scary runs runs that bring it very close or to the United States. All right, time frame for the islands. A little stronger, a little earlier. Tuesday, a tropical storm making landfall in the Leeward Islands. You'd be having some heavy rainfall, uh, basically uh, Grenada North. Uh, then you go into uh, St. Thomas, St. Martin, uh, some heavy rain, some strong winds. That continues to move toward the north. Then because it's stronger now, uh, Puerto Rico gets very close to a hurricane. Uh, and because it's stronger now, it's wanting to veer more to the north. Uh, and look at that. It really blows up. And two, 
goes near Bermuda is probably a Cat 4, Cat 5. And again, this dip in this jet stream over here toward the United States uh, responsible for, for that. So uh, as we get in closer here, we're going to have to watch this. Wrong button. As we get in closer here, we're going to have to watch this for the island. So let's, let's get in closer and kind of show you uh, what we're looking at here as far as when this could be and what could change to make this a possible threat uh, for the southeast. Well, here's this big steering Bermuda high. This is what steers the systems. And as we move forward, you see all those different low pressure systems. That is uh, what we track. It's, it's Each one represents a different run of the computer models and allows us to see kind of closer in what may happen in these locations. So we do it with a slightly different starting position, slightly different uh, uh, intensity. And if you end up at the same result, you know you got a pretty accurate model run. So as we move forward here, um, what I can tell you is that they're in pretty good agreement past Puerto Rico, and that's when they start to shift. Some solutions of the European do go a bit to the west, because they're weaker. The stronger ones get pulled to the north and, and right along that Bermuda High. They're just kind of easier to kind of get up in the upper level flow there and just kind of scurry on about. Uh, but because there is a dip indicated by these lows here and there's a rise here, so you got steering currents going like this and you got steering currents going like that, this wants to kind of follow that needle between uh, the Outer Banks and Bermuda and, and take that opening while it can. But European shows some of those lows a little bit closer to the United States, which is, again, why we're dialed in on it. What does this look like for winds? Uh, it gets close to the islands and then blows up, according to the latest European model, and really goes over Bermuda as a Cat 4, Cat 5. That'd be a real big one. I mean, that's, that's a real big system there. Uh, the GFS wants to take tropical storm or category force winds over St. Martin, uh, St. Thomas, and then just north of you folks in Puerto Rico. Then it continues north where it looks to curve out way before becoming a threat to the United States. And that's a great thing because whoa, those winds, those reds right there are 100 plus miles per hour. So folks, uh, simply put, we've got to pay attention to this. We have an idea of where this system is going to go, but we know that uh, the conditions here are, are really, really conducive for this. You see the, the sea surface temperatures I have plotted behind me here. Uh, they're running the equivalent of, of peak hurricane season, so late September, uh, where, where it's just as hot as it can be. So we have the energy that you would have at peak hurricane season, oh, about a month or two early. Uh, we've had that. Um, this wasn't very cold a lot of the, the winter, and many of uh, these fronts didn't make it quite to the Atlantic. So we started off hurricane season with warm waters, and that above average water temperature uh, has, has led it to be quite active when these storms do form. So my commitment to you is to keep you posted. This thing can and will change. We know we're going to be dealing with a monster this week. We know that it's going to take some time. It looks like it's not even making that curve or turn until we get to Monday, Tuesday's time frame uh, going toward the islands. And then from there, it's slowly meandering through the Caribbean toward the end of this week. So we're going to keep an eye on it, folks. Please, if you can, like this video, subscribe to this channel if you're new to it. And, and please, if you can, let me know where you're watching from in the comment section. I love watching this. I love to see who I'm communicating with, and I love interacting with you on these videos. So uh, my prayers are for you guys in the path of this. Uh, headed to church right now, special day. Uh, I got some family members getting baptized. Really, really great day. I'm um, just thankful for, for you guys and for this platform to be able to talk about weather. Uh, we will keep you posted.